Growing up in a household with Irish parents, soccer was always on the TV on Saturday morning. So that's just kind of, that was my childhood growing up. Played a ton of different sports, but just having that kind of European influence, I think soccer was always kind of the main one. And as I kind of got into my early teen years, I kind of felt that I had a little bit of, you know, of a chance to do something in the game. I think what was actually really beneficial was I had a brother who was two years older than me and I was always playing on his team. So I was always kind of the young guy having to kind of scrap and claw. So I think by the time he kind of got into like high school and I started to play with people my own age, I felt like really that I had an edge over those guys. So I was a striker all the way growing up. I remember I joined the Rapids Academy my junior year and fast forward six months to January of my junior year of high school and I couldn't hit the side of a barn door. Zero goals in the academy, was playing absolutely terrible and was kind of losing my confidence. And they, they, but they saw, they saw something in me. So they were like, listen, we're gonna move you back into the midfield. And then they allowed me to train with the reserves that summer and my senior year of high school, that was it. I mean, that was that was the year. I mean, my senior year, everything just kind of clicked because I think I gained the skills of a midfielder, but I knew how to score goals because I had scored goals my whole life. So I just started scoring so many goals from midfield. My, my confidence was just through the roof. And then obviously, as I graduated high school, I signed with the first team with the Rapids. So I signed in the summer and in September, I had a little setback with that. It just shows the kind of nature of the professional game. I go in for a tackle. It was an older senior player was not too pleased with the tackle. And I got, I actually got hit in the face and I fractured my orbital bone. And I was out for four months. And this is about two months after I signed. And I think the good thing about that was I was able to kind of step out and just kind of learn the ropes of how to be a professional footballer. It's 24 seven. I mean, you have to eat right, you have to sleep right. You have to prepare before training and you have to recover after training. And I was able to kind of see that. And I think that's why I was so successful the next year in 2013, because I was able to become an actual pro in that time that I was injured. Because the difference between being like a guy from high school who messes around with his friends and can still play really well to going out on a senior level and trying to make an impact on MLS games is, is it's night and day. And I do think when younger players are looking to make that commitment, you have to really look at where is your passion and are you really ready to make those commitments? Because if you are, it's the best job in the world. But if you're not, it's it, it can be very challenging. I think the happiest I ever was playing soccer, I would probably have to say it was 2013 and it was my second year with the Rapids and I was just playing the game and I was getting picked every Saturday and I, I really just had a, I, I, it was my breakout year and I was just taking in the experience and that year I got called into the national team, I went to the U20 World Cup, I went on trial with a couple teams in England and that would be a year I would look back on and be like I really just was kind of in the moment and just enjoying myself and not really worrying about the outside factors. The most special is probably getting promoted in Holland. The day before the home leg, we practiced in our stadium and the wall of supporters was there shooting off flares and everything. So we knew it was a big occasion here and we came away with a, a, a result, which was which was massive. And then driving to the second leg. So the, the day of the game, we met at the stadium and it was absolutely packed with supporters. So we got on the bus. And as we're driving, we're driving like one mile an hour and all the supporters are lying in the streets with their flares and shooting off their flare guns and just holding up their banners. And I remember uh, we got to the hotel, everybody's uh, family had a, sent a video, a short video being like, oh, we wish you luck in this game, it was such a big game. And I was kind of sitting there like, oh geez, that's a, that's a shame. Like, there's no way they could have reached out to my family because they're in the States, nobody knows them. Obviously, sure enough, they had gotten a hold of my brother and, and my family. And I mean, going out for that last game, you were just on cloud nine, just feeling like I can do anything. And I think we won 4-1. We absolutely obliterated them. And oh my God, the night after that. So they set up a stage in the parking lot of the stadium. And I think they're honest to God, like I think 10,000 people from this village and the village was, you know, a small village and there was 10,000 people in this parking lot and we came up and we went straight on stage. 
so I always told myself I always wanted to play for a club that had like championship aspirations. I feel for me like the worst thing is when you're with people who aren't driven and not passionate about the game and not looking to improve every day. It's so hard to change a culture like that. And it was funny like this this past off season, I, I kind of had to put my money where my mouth is a little bit because I had some options to go back to Europe, but once the Sounders came in uh, to, to give me an opportunity, for me, it was like, this is your chance. Like, there's no better club in the United States than the Sounders at this moment in the sense of championship caliber, getting to finals, winning trophies. And so being here in Seattle right now is like, it's an absolute pleasure. And obviously it's been very stop start with everything that's gone on, but the first couple months were phenomenal. And now getting back, it's been, it's been solid. What I would tell to a young player that was trying to become a professional would be that you've got to play the long game. I think if somebody had pulled me aside when they were younger and said like, listen, what matters is the day in, day out commitment to the process, commitment to getting better every single day, committing to getting more professional every single day. Every day you go out onto the pitch, do a little bit extra, do your extra work that you need to work on. You're obviously gonna have some deficiencies in your game, work on those work on your diet, work on your, your your sleep and your your body, work on all those things because in the long run, you're gonna have success. But this game is being mentally strong, I think. You have to have a belief in yourself that when you step onto the pitch, you're focused, you're concentrated and you do your job because at the end of the day, that's all you can do. All you can do is control that when you go onto the pitch, you do your job. If you go onto the pitch and you're worried about him and you're worried about the coach and Oh geez, I just made a mistake. It's it's not for you because you have it, it's the next ball that counts, and you have to be focused, and you just have to back yourself. You have to believe in yourself. I'm Shane O'Neill, and I'm a central defender for the Seattle Sounders.